Here are 10 of the weirdest activities the super rich like to do. Number 10. Camel Beauty Contest You guys ever look at a camel and go, wow, that's a beautiful camel? Well, that's a thing for plenty of rich folk out in the Middle East. At the annual Camel Festival near Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, approximately 30,000 camels are brought each year to participate in the world's most popular camel festival and beauty pageant. To be honest, camel beauty pageants make dog pageants seem totally reasonable. Apparently, there are different categories at the festival, and the prize money isn't anything to sniff at. Get this, prize money for the pageants get up in the tens of millions of dollars. With that much money on the line, some people are tempted to cheat the system by enhancing the animal's natural beauty. The King Abdulaziz Camel Festival's website has a section explaining the standards of camel beauty. Dozens of camels were banned from the beauty contest after it was revealed that they were given Botox injections. Apparently, participants used Botox for the lips, the nose, the upper lips, the lower lips, and even the jaw to make the camel look better. Some people even pumped their camels with hormones to make them appear more muscular and strong. What a time to be alive. What are you guys' thoughts on this? And oh yeah, do us a favor and hit that like button. Number 9. Segway Polo Any of you guys ever ridden a Segway? It doesn't seem like that many people have, and we definitely don't know anyone that actually owns one. However, Segway Polo has gained in popularity. One particular group that gets together to play Segway Polo is the Bay Area Segway Enthusiast Group, which formed in 2004. Do we really need to explain the difference between Segway Polo and regular polo? We don't think so, but we'll do it for you guys anyway. It's similar to regular polo, except that instead of playing on a horse, each player rides their own, you guessed it, Segway. The rules have been adapted from bicycle polo and horse polo. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak is one of the many people who love to play Segway Polo. In fact, he loves it so much that in 2015, his team, the Silicon Valley Aftershocks, played in Cologne, Germany for the Segway Polo World Championship, the Woz Cup. And yes, the Woz Cup is named after him. Interestingly though, even off the polo field, Wozniak enjoys using his Segway. Back in 2009, he said that he takes it with him almost everywhere he goes, as he uses it as his main way of getting around. Number 8. Big Game Hunting Rich people love their big game hunts, and hunting is something that won't be going away anytime soon. As long as it's on a private reserve and not a national park, it's completely legal to hunt endangered species that have been raised privately for such a purpose, with the permission of the government. We're not advocating it, we're just telling you guys about it. Big game hunting doesn't come cheap, so what's the appeal? Many Americans spend thousands of dollars a year to travel to South America and other nearby countries to hunt everything from wildebeest, crocodiles, bush pigs, giraffes, zebras, lions, leopards, and astonishingly, critically endangered rhinos. Successfully bagging a white rhino includes a trophy fee of $125,000. The amount of the rarest and most endangered animals is even higher. In fact, an upper-end hunting expedition can cost upwards of $70,000 before it's all said and done. In January 2014, Namibia's Ministry of Environment and Tourism issued a hunting license for a black rhino, a critically endangered species to a 36-year-old guy who bid $350,000 to hunt the animal. The Namibian government said it issued the permission to hunt the bull rhino because the older male could have actually hurt younger males needed to repopulate the species. The $350,000 raised went to rhino anti-poaching efforts since the animals are often hunted for their horns. Number 7. Falconry Falconry is the hunting of wild animals in their natural habitat by means of a trained bird of prey. I'd say it's not the most ordinary hobby out there, but it's mostly popular in the Middle East. Historically, the sport was practiced in the Arabian Gulf, wherever falcons were found. Nowadays, it's so popular that plenty of rich guys choose to keep and train falcons as pets and participate in contests. There's even the Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital, 
the world's first hospital of its kind. Each year, about 60,000 falcons are treated at the hospital. The hospital is so ridiculous, it has individually air-conditioned rooms for over 200 birds. It also offers annual checkups for falcons because, for the owners, it's often very difficult to assess whether a falcon is sick or not. The staff is experienced in treating everything. Even the bird's feathers are carefully scrutinized. Apparently, a falcon's flight becomes significantly unbalanced when they lose just a single flight feather. To help them out, the hospital has feathers in stock, and replacing them is a pretty standard procedure. But yes, falconry is a popular hobby that rich people love to do. Number 6. High Adrenaline Activities Plenty of people love to do high adrenaline activities, such as skydiving or whitewater rafting. Google co-founder Sergey Brin is no different. He seems to love to do a lot of interesting physical hobbies. He's into activities such as inline skating, gymnastics, and running to work in those barefoot shoes that hug individual toes. But perhaps his most unusual hobby is doing high-flying trapeze, which he began doing at a local circus training center in San Francisco. Flying trapeze is a specific form of the trapeze where essentially a performer just jumps from a platform with the trapeze, does whatever tricks they're trying to do in the air, and someone else who's swinging from a separate catch bar catches them. Does this sound like fun to anyone? It just seems like anyone that enjoys doing this activity needs really good insurance. Back in 2009, Bryn took an advanced trapeze class at the Circus Warehouse in New York. Apparently, he was so good at doing tricks on the trapeze, he was in the top 20% of his class. This high-flying trapeze class is so popular, people fly out from all over the world to take this class and learn to do high-flying tricks in the air. Number 5. Exotic Pets Exotic pets don't come cheap. So, what's up with the surging demand for captive wildlife? Owning an exotic animal is almost a rite of passage for the rich and famous. On social media sites, such as Instagram and Facebook, chained tigers and cheetahs are flaunted next to Lamborghinis, Louis bags, and luxury yachts. There's also an online marketplace. Want a bear, lynx, or even a Bactrian camel? Shop like you're browsing the racks at a Neiman Marcus with an online marketplace. Have $6,000 to spend? Take home your own baby sloth. A wallaby? That'll only cost you $2,500. Arguably, exotic pets are just another commodity available exclusively to the super-rich. Mike Tyson is known for spending more than $20,000 on the purchase of three Bengal tigers. Paris Hilton once added a Kinkajo, which she named Baby Love, to her entourage in 2006. And Biebs famously acquired a Capuchin monkey, possibly illegal, only to leave it behind with customs officials in Munich, Germany. Number 4. J-Class Yacht Racing In case you guys don't know, J-Class yachts are a type of single-mast sailboats that must have either been built in the early 20th century or produced meticulously to period plans. They're cool and they're also quite rare. There are only three original J-Class yachts left in the world. With this exclusivity, there's no wonder that J-Class Yacht Racing is often dubbed the most expensive hobby on Earth. Yeah, you guys figured it out. J-Class yachts cost millions to buy, but also, they cost millions just to maintain. Obviously, people that participate in J-Class yacht racing are usually heirs to a fortune or titans of industry. Most of the time, owners are pretty secretive when it comes to revealing too many spending details. However, you can pretty much tell yourself that they don't come cheap. One particular yacht has an entirely mahogany veneered interior, all taken from a single tree. Another one has a dedicated wine cellar. We can keep going on, but do you guys really need to hear about all the ridiculous things that can come on a racing yacht? Number 3. Car Collections There's money, and then there's money. With the former, plenty of people with a bit of money might be able to put together a nice little garage with a limited edition weekend toy. However, the latter, we're talking Sultan of Brunei money here, you can buy 2,000 cars just so they never have to be seen with the same car. I guess. 2,000 of anything is a lot of a thing to own, but owning 2,000 cars is just mind-boggling. 
with massive reserves of oil and natural gas at their disposal, members of the Brunei royal family are among the richest people in the world. Sultan Hassan al Bokiai and his brother Jeffrey spent much of their lives building what's probably the most insane car collection on earth. At its prime, their car collection was filled with many limited cars. Highlights included the Ferrari F50, a Ferrari FX, the famous Ferrari 456 GT Venice station wagon, a room full of Mercedes SLs, and the list goes on and on. At one point, the collection was rumored to number almost 2,500 cars. Of course, they haven't even driven most of the cars in the collection, because that would take years. But really, why buy cars and never drive it? Why have a collection of things you don't get to enjoy? Number 2. Camels, Camels, Camels And we're back on camels again. Did you guys know that hundreds of camels are shipped from Australia to Saudi Arabia every year? And no, they're not all for the beauty contests out there. These camels are destined for restaurant tables, as Saudi Arabia is a major camel-consuming nation. Well, that escalated quickly. Professional camel racing is very popular across the Middle East. However, camel herds bred in those countries have become too domesticated and were mostly bred for racing, not so much for eating. To tackle the problem, rich countries in the Middle East started regularly importing camels bred in Australia. Camels were first brought into Australia in the 19th century, and their population multiplied. The Australian herd was incredibly genetically diverse in the 19th century as they were imported from northern India and what is now Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. Australia has the last remaining wild camel herd left in the world, and the meat from the Australian camels is much more suitable for eating than the meat of the camels bred in the Middle East. Camel burger, anyone? Number 1. Private Island Life Private island life sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? It sounds like the perfect getaway to escape the crowds. However, a private island will cost you a lot more than its purchase price. Even though you can get some islands on sale for prices as low as 100 grand, the final costs will very likely reach millions of dollars. The old adage that real estate is all about location, location, location is especially true when it comes to buying an island. In short, you're likely going to need a boat, or maybe a jet, which means your island had better be big enough to house a runway. On top of that, islands typically have their own ecosystems, and in many locations, you'll need an environmental impact study before you can even begin to think about development. Around the world, there are nearly a thousand private islands for sale, in a market which has grown significantly since the global financial crash. Yes, rich people like to buy and sell private islands for fun. Here's what's next the incriminating evidence on Facebook, which promptly led to his arrest. The bizarre photos show Morgan doing weird stuff, such as pretending to eat a pile of cash, a mixed stack as he cleverly referred to it, or talking into the money as though it were a phone. TBH, I think Floyd, and 50 others.